Welcome to our weekly worship service. This is Peace Evangelical and Reformed Church in Potter, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Mark, and we're going to celebrate the goodness of God this week. We're going to talk about our role, our responsibility as Christians to shine the light of the gospel in our communities, because lights weren't meant to be hid under jars or beds or bowls, but to be put in a place where they can be accessed and experienced and seen by others. And so we're going to look at that scripture in Luke and talk about how we can do that and why we should do that. And as always, our worship services are Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. If there's anyone looking for a church home, we'd love to have you here at Peace Church. And if you're considering looking for one, consider us here in Peace Church in Potter. We'll go ahead and have a prayer and ask for God's blessing. Thank you, God, for the chance to have church. We dedicate the service to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Yeah, welcome to Peace Evangelical and Reformed Church. It's great to see everybody on this beautiful fall morning. And you just heard from the Potter's Clay, and they'll have another song coming up a little later in the service. And as we begin our worship, just have a few announcements to highlight. We have four birthdays in the Peace Church Parish community that I had that I found in the computer. Um, tomorrow, Eric Duco's birthday. Thursday, Carl Martin. Saturday, Betty Becker. And also on Saturday, Macy Stecker. So happy birthday. Okay, and this is Cake Day where we recognize milestone birthdays and anniversaries. So we're going to be going downstairs after church. You're invited to join us for some cake. And also some, I think there'll be some beverages down there. And I'll be meeting with the youth group families that are going to Minnesota for the Operation Christmas and we'll be meeting downstairs roughly around 10, 10 or 10, 15, and we will have that meeting. Also, on Friday, December 4th, we are going to have an all-night prayer meeting at the church from 9 p.m. until 7 a.m. Praise the Lord. It's going to be awesome. And everyone's welcome. You can join us in the sanctuary the whole time. It'll be the first 10 minutes sharing prayer requests. Then there'll be about half an hour or so of praying and then there'll be a coffee break, well, plenty of coffee, and then we're going to come back and have prayer. If you're unable to be with us, please sign up for at least one hour of the night where you pray with us from your home, and that would encourage us to know that you're joining us in prayer. And why are we doing this? Well, one, number one, we're praying for our church, for our spiritual and numerical growth, 
And also we're praying for our communities, our counties, our state, our nation, and our world. You heard about the awful terrorist attack in Paris, France on Friday. We really need to pray and to get serious before God. And that's what this is all about. That's coming up Friday, December 4th, 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. Also, and yep, youth group meeting downstairs. Any other announcements? Yes, Mimi. Okay. November 29th is the f Oh, November 29th is the first Sunday of Advent and the kids are going to be practicing for the Christmas pageant. There's no Sunday school on November 29th, so practice will begin at 10 o'clock and there will be donuts. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, another announcement? Yeah. Brilliant Blooms is a new flower shop in Brilliant. They're willing, if you buy a poinsettia, they're willing to bring it to the church and have it here by the 4th of December. Okay. Any other announcements? Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys, for all who helped put up the nativity scene in the front of church, and we're very appreciative of the work. Renee. Okay. <laughs> the Advent tea is, is Sunday, December 6th. What time does it start? 11.15 a.m. is the program. We need people to sign up who will um, use their talents sing it, doing a, sing, a song or a reading. And soup and sandwiches will be served. And please sign up if you're able to participate. It would be terrific. We always have a great time. Yeah. yeah. And everyone from the church is invited to, to attend and participate. And it'll be great. It's always great. Yes. Yeah. Thank you to whoever cleaned the chapel downstairs. It was great for potter's clay practice. Okay. Okay. And yes, Holly. Okay, tomorrow is TJ's birthday. Happy birthday, TJ. Okay. And this concludes our morning announcements. Let us pray. Father, thank you that we can worship you. We dedicate the service to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Take a moment to greet the person beside you, behind you, and in front of you, and welcome them to Peace Church.
good singing, everybody. <laughs> to remain standing for the reciting of the Apostles' Creed found in the back of the songbook on the right side and also on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And we have a special music presentation from the Potter's Clay. to the children's sermon.
Our Bible lesson comes from Luke chapter 8. of my heart would be faithful to the scriptures in Jesus name. Amen. A couple of ladies were driving in the dark thick of night and they passed through a village where there had been a power outage and they were frightened as they cautiously came through the village. But when they got outside of the village, they saw in the distance a light almost they realized that the light that was shining was a church, a house of worship, was lighting up their world. That's how we want the world to see that transformation. We want them to know that, and we want them to see we are a beacon of light, a warm and inviting light in a world that is in dark and lost. What are you doing to shine the light of Jesus Christ to the people in your world? By your Thank you. 
put it underneath a jar, a flame would go out immediately. I mean, that's deep. And if you lit it and put it under your bed, you'd have a fire hazard. You'd go to bed, and in a few minutes, you'd be like, what's that smell? What's burning? Well, I know. I'm burning. Ah! <laughs> Jesus is saying nobody's dumb enough to do that. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a jar or under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that everybody can see and experience the light. Jesus wants you to hold out the gospel of God's love and kindness in a way that people can see it and experience it. The kids are going to be putting on the Christmas pageant, you know, those practices November 29th right after church. And on Christmas Eve, they're going to give a presentation of the story of how Jesus came into our world and was born on Christmas Day. That is a beautiful way to shine the light of the gospel so that people can access and experience it. Another thing you can do is you can visit a neighbor who is a veteran and just have veterans there. And maybe you can see if you can just watch his life and his experience. And you can go to his house and knock on the door and say, I understand you've served our country. I want to thank you for serving our country. Happy belated Veterans Day. You have my support. You have my love. You have my sympathy. And I want you to know that Jesus is loving you. And when you greet your neighbor and thank him for his service and point him toward the love of Jesus, you are shining the light in a way that is acceptable to others. Why should we do that? says in verse 17, there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Dr. Robert Stein makes this comment. He says, as we witness and proclaim the good news, the secrets of God's kingdom are made known and brought out into the open. The riches and the longings of eternal life are disclosed and revealed to others as we witness to people and tell them about I know people who will go to restaurants and have a meal, and they'll actually stick pictures of their feet. <laughs> Put it on Facebook. Can you imagine that? They'll do that. But you know, the reason why they do that is because they are they like the food so much. They want their friends and family to know that there's a wonderful place to eat right near where they live. And as exciting as it is to share the discovery of a new of a good restaurant in their area, it's even more exciting to tell people about what Christ is doing in your area. And for example, you could say I was at the Bible study at the church on Friday afternoon, and we were talking about the missionary adventures of Japan, and it was so interesting. I felt like I was walking right alongside Paul as we went from town to town, and I was with him on the boat when it landed, when it crashed, and when he got on the and the story ends with him under house arrest, sharing the gospel in Rome with anyone who came to visit him. And we heard that study, and I was thinking, well, why in the world does it end like that? Why don't we find out what happened to Paul? Why don't we find out what happened to Peter? Why don't we find out what happened to the rest of the apostles? And then it dawned on me, the book of Acts is not the biography of Paul or John or James or Peter. It is the story of the spreading of the word of God to the uttermost part. And whether your name is Mary, John, Paul, James, or something else, your job is to keep the story going. Your job is to share the word and keep the book of Acts going. We are writing Acts chapters 29 and 30 with our lives today. And then the pastor says, what are you doing to continue the story of being our ambassadors? What are you doing to shine the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that people in your Boy, that's a powerful command. It's more than just a comment from the pastor. And also, sharing the riches and treasures of heaven with others is not only telling about a Bible study you're attending, it could also be an answer to prayer. Last week, we couldn't get the camera going, and 
worked on on Sunday to no avail. And then for 90 minutes on Monday, he couldn't get it fixed. And then it finally dawned on him, you know, I should think about this. <laughs> so, Lord, we're having trouble with our camera. Please do something so that we can televise our worship services so they can read. And before I could say in Jesus' name, amen, Matthew Heaton was with me, and he said, I think I see something. And he went in there and hooked it up, and ding, the thing came back. So those are the kind of story, stories when we share them, we are opening up the treasures of the kingdom of heaven so that people can access them and experience them. And then Jesus goes on to say in verse 18, therefore, consider carefully how you listen. You know, whenever you see the word therefore in the Bible, you need to find out. So many times we'll listen to a sermon and we'll say, boy, I wish so-and-so was here. Or this really applies to that person. Or I don't know why he's talking about shine in the light. That's what we hire our pastors for. The pastor is supposed to shine the light. And that's why we have elders and deacons on every Sunday. That's why we have Sunday school teachers. That's why we have a choir. It's their job to shine the light and it's my job to sit and watch. That's the way it ought to be. So consider carefully how you are hearing this word of God. Why should we do that? Jesus says in verse 18, whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has will be taken away from him. You remember the parable of the talents in Matthew 25? The guy who had the five talents and put it to work and earned five more. shine the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. True, converted, authentic, born-again Christians will not hide the light of the gospel under a jar. They will share it with the people in their lives. And how do I know that? Because Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. When you teach Sunday school, sermons at home with your kids, just like I do here in church, we throw those out the window pops, that's your call or I don't even care what you do. You're not just telling them a bedtime story. You are shining the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ in a way the kids can access and experience it. And when somebody says, where is God when life is difficult? Where is God when life is hard? You can say, you know what? Those are the times I reach out to God and Philippians 4, 7 says the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And when you share that word, it's going to be 
Before Christ came to earth, it predicted that he would come here and minister and be pierced for our transgressions and rise again. And when you share this powerful apologetic of the word of God, you're not just giving all the weak information. You're shining the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ and saying that he is indeed the king of the house. And when they say, well. And they knew it would get them persecuted, punished, and killed, and they publicized it anyway? Isn't it far more likely they, that they were so stirred by the story of Christ's life and death and resurrection that they went racing back to the Old Testament scriptures to discover the significance of what transpired on Jesus' cross? When you share educated notions with common objections like that, you're not just giving out a say, you know what, I was thinking about being a vet, I was thinking about being a teacher, I was thinking about being a social worker, I was thinking about being an athlete or a singer, but I've come to realize there's no greater joy and no greater responsibility and no greater privilege than sharing the word of God with people in my generation. Pastor Mark's not going to be able to do it forever. Don Shire's not going to be able to do it forever. Father Timothy and Brilliant is not going to be able to do it forever. But I were so attracted to the light that they went up to Benjamin Franklin and said, we would love to have another one at our house. And I believe with all my heart that as you minister to others and encourage them, people will see the light of the gospel, the light of Jesus Christ in your life. And they're going to say, I want what you have. I want some of that light. I want some of that encouragement. You always seem to have peace no matter what
we will sing, Send the Light, verse 1 and verse 4. Number 540, Send the Light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Okay, this is the part of the service where we offer up our prayers. Um, we need to pray for Vera Casper at Peabody Manor. If you have any other prayer requests, we need to pray for Paris, France, don't we? We need to lift up that country to the Lord. Jane. Thanks, yeah, thank you for letting us know. Okay, Maria. Okay, family of Scott Preplin. Yes, Lynn. Will do. Yes, Andy. Okay. Need to keep Kim Ballou in our prayers. She had sinus surgery this week, and she still came in and made the bulletin. She's awesome, but we need to pray for continued healing. Okay. Yes, Tracy. Okay, for the Christmas program, we're going to shine the light. Yes, Diane. Okay, the Henry Dahlman family. Okay. Yes, yeah, Stephanie. Okay, we'll pray. For, we'll pray for Tracy's sister. Let us pray. We thank you, God, that we can have this time of the week where we can recharge our batteries and be renewed in our faith and also have a time of prayer for others. Lord, we want to pray for Kim Ballou that she continues to heal up from sinus surgery. We pray, Lord, that she'll be feeling much, much better by tomorrow morning, be able to um, go back to regular work and responsibilities. Lord, we pray for Vera Casper, that you would be gracious to her and continue to come alongside her. She just celebrated her birthday this past Friday, 95 years old. And so, Lord, we are we're grateful for all the years of ministry that she has had among us, and we pray that you would be near her now during these tender days. Lord, we also want to lift up France and the city of Paris, they endured a terrible terrorist attack on Friday. And these are becoming all too frequent in our world. And 
we just pray that we would come alongside the people and just continue to show our love and our support and our prayers and help us to be unified in our desire to stop the halt of Islamic terrorism. Lord, we also pray for those who suffered in the Beirut, Lebanon terror attack the day before that didn't receive quite the press coverage that the one in France did, but th there too many lives were lost. We pray, God, for the people of Beirut that um, you would show grace and mercy to them and come alongside them in their time of, of sadness. Lord, we also pray for the family of Scott Kreplin, that you would comfort them as he, he died this week in a, in a bad work accident. And we pray, Lord, that the, com that the family will find compassion and comfort and hope from Christ. We also pray, Lord, for Lynn Stecker's mom for continued healing. We pray for her father to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior and Messiah. We also pray for her sister Becky to come to a deeper knowledge and intimacy in her relationship with you and be assured of eternal life. We also pray for the Christmas pageant as the kids prepare to present the message of Jesus to the community. Pray for the Henry Dahlman family. The funeral was yesterday. Comfort those who are grieving. We also pray, Lord, for, um, we pray for Tracy Bartle's sister, Tammy, recovering from surgery. We pray that you would speed her healing. Also, Lord, we pray your blessing on our troops, both here and around the world. Most of all, God, we thank you for Jesus himself, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. stand together for the closing song of the service, then we'll go downstairs and have our cake and eat it too. <laughs> Number 503. Has 
come to me. I want to pass it on.